One of the big advantages of, of this inverter too is that it's got very large pads on which to mount the DC terminals. So you'll find even if you touch this when it's running at 190, 200 amps or even more, the current easily is taken into the, into the, um, into the inverter and then it's connected not by cables but by bus bar from the inside. So these, these, this connections and the method of termination into the internals of the inverter are very, very solid and, and uh, very substantial. We have covers, substantial covers to go over the DC, DC terminals to protect it. So that, that just, they just bolt straight on and they're very substantial. An earth terminal is down here as well as an earth terminal on the, on the input. So you can connect this to the earth of your, uh, of your vehicle if necessary. Here you've got the output which goes to your load. Here you've got your input terminal. So one, that's the earth, line and neutral in. That's the neutral line and earth terminal layout. And this is the AC side of the inverter. Here you've got the inverter output circuit breaker. Here you've got the charger circuit breaker, which protects the inverter during charging mode. If it goes on overload, you just press the switch and that resets the circuit breaker. And then the cover fits over the top of this like so, which warns you for high voltage and tells you that it's uh, 240 volts, etc. And then, if necessary, we provide a, uh, a power board from the output side where you can take your AC power if you don't want a hard wire. Basically, you can see that it's well ventilated. You can also see that you can mount the inverter vertically. The fan will force the air through. If you want to mount it horizontally, you can notice that the footing is such that it mounts above the ground. So your moisture won't go into the unit because there's a, there's a, there's a step here to raise it above the ground point. Okay, just talking about the remote control switch here. At the moment, the main switch is in the off position, but now I'm going to switch the inverter on using the, the remote switch, which can be up to 10 meters away from the inverter. The power saving mode is on, the light switch is correct, so the remote switch is working. I turn it off, and now I go into normal inverter mode. The light's just flashed, and the normal inverter mode switches on. And you can see here that the lights, the LED lights that are on the remote control switch duplicate, which are on the main inverter board, which shows its LEDs. One of the other things that I want to show you down here uh, is that there are a number of switches down here. Uh, S1, S2, S3, S4. S1 is for the low voltage cutout, so you can set the low voltage cutout at various settings by changing these dip switches. S2 sets the AC input range, how wide the input range of the AC voltage will be when it's coming from the, uh, when it's in charging mode. The third is the, is the load settings, that's the switch which sets for the load settings. And S4 is a switch over here. S4 is when you want to run the inverter from a generator. And once it's got about 10 days running and it knows what's the normal voltage, what's the unnormal voltage, you can actually automatically turn on the generator when the voltage dips too low. The generator will, will that's, a, that's a special optional extra. As, as you can see, the, the, DC, the DC supply is at the moment charging the load. But if I turn on the input power back into the, into the inverter, so that's going into the input leads, not into the output leads there, I turn that on, the inverter is just checking to see what's going on, and now it's switched over into charging mode, so it's in fast charging mode. So now the power is going into the battery and also into the load. So here's the charging LEDs lights on. 
charging current here is 22.3 and we can increase that charging current by adjusting the charging knob we've increased that to down down and by increasing it the other way is 30 45 70 up to just over 72 amps we're charging this battery pack now so we're charging the battery the same as still still supplying the load so it's like a UPS without a battery. And now the, the charging current can be set here with a, with a dial. At the moment it's set at just charging the batteries at around about 45 amps DC. Um, this is a wonderful feature so that if you take the inverter out remote and you've got a, a battery in the back of the truck or a big battery in the back of the truck and you want to bring it back or you want you, you pull up, you can just plug it into the, the 240 volt supply and quickly charge the battery back up again.